this two-part Swift UI tutorial, we are going to develop the gallery feature. Let's see in action what we will create in the first lecture. As you can see, there are many translucent shapes moving around on the screen with a cool animation. While they are moving from one place to a different place unpredictably, they are also scaling up or down randomly. That said, we will focus on learning how to develop this motion effect programmatically in Swift UI. If this is you want to learn, then let's launch Xcode and start coding along with me. Motion effect. First things first, we need to create a dedicated file for this motion animation. Select the view group as its destination and create a new Swift UI file as I do. Name this file Motion Animation View and save it as usual. Now we are going to embed the placeholder text into a very special view. Command plus click on its name and select the Embed option from the contextual menu as I show you. After that replace the placeholder container with Geometry Reader. Enter. Geometry Reader. Geometry in New command end of geometry With this geometry reader container we can measure not only the screen size but any view's size if we wish. Basically it gives us access to the size and position of the parent view. To see it in action how it works let's modify the content of the placeholder text. Shall we? Insert this code. Text with int geometry dot size dot width height int geometry dot size dot height as you can notice with this geometry width and height we printed out the exact size of the screen in points. One important thing we should keep in mind that when we wrap any view into a geometry reader container, then the origin point will be changed from the center to top left. That's why the text view moved its position from center to top left. Alright, let's continue developing the motion effect. Now we need to embed the text view into a new Z stack. Enter. Z stack. New comment, end of, this stack. Super! After that, let's add a new circle before the text view. Enter the following code. Circle. Foreground color. Gray. Opacity. 0 0.15. Frame. Width. 256. Height. 256 Alignment Center Position X Geometry Dot Size Dot Width Divided by 2 Y Geometry Dot Size Dot Height Divided by 2 Great as you can see, we used the geometry, width and height values to position the circle in the center of the screen. That's said, no matter which iPhone or iPad we have, this circle always will be in the center. How cool is that? Next. Now we want to create not only one but multiple circles on the screen. To do that, we need to create a new property that will store a random number for us. Enter. Add state. Private. Var. Random circle. Equals. Int. Dot. Random. In. Close the range from 12 to 16. This code will generate a random number between 12 and 16. Nice. Now it's time to multiply the circle with a for each. Embed the circle into a new loop by selecting the repeat option from the context menu. After that, modify it with this code. For each. 
close the range from zero to random circle. ID dot self item in new comment end of loop. This code will repeat the circle as many times as the value of the random circle property. Keep in mind that we when use a closed range in the for each, then we always have to provide some kind of identification. In this case, it is the dot self ID. As you may notice, our code works, however, we got all circle repeated on top of each other and that's not exactly that we want. So, what should we do to fix that and move on? Well, since this motion animation is quite complex, therefore I will give you all instructions in detail on how to assemble it. Instructions Enter the following code after the properties section. Mark Functions New comment number 1 Random coordinate New comment number 2 Random size New comment number 3 Random scale New comment number 4 Random speed New comment number 5 Random delay And here they go the functions that we need to create. It's time to go through them step by step, shall we? First, let's create a random coordinate with a new function. Enter. Func. Random coordinate. Max. CG float. Return. CG float. Return. CG float dot random. In. Close the range from 0 to max. After that, let's implement this function into our code. Navigate to the position modifier of the circle and replace the existing code. Position x random coordinate max geometry dot size dot width y random coordinate max geometry dot size dot Height. Now let's start the live preview since this is the best way to test the motion animation and see what's going on on the screen. Let's do it. Ok, so far so good. We got a bunch of circles positioned all over the screen. Next we can continue randomizing the sizes of these circles. Let's create a new function to do that. Func Random size. Return CG float. Return CG float. Int dot random. In closed range from 10 to 300. This code will generate different sizes randomly from 10 points to 300 points. Now let's change the frame modifier with this new function. Enter. Frame with random size. Height random size. Awesome! As you can see, there are circles with different sizes on the screen from now. We are closer to accomplish our goal. Now we need to deal with the scale effect. Let's create a new function for that too. Func random scale. Return CG float. Return CG float double dot random in closed range from 0 0.1 to 2.0. As you can see, we are going to scale up and down a circle between 0 0.1 and 2.0. Now let's implement this code by adding a new modifier to the circle. Shall we? Insert the following code between the frame and the position modifiers as I do. Scale effect. Random scale. As you can see, the scale effect has been applied immediately without any animation yet. But don't worry, we will fix it right now. Scroll to the top and let's create a new property for this animation. Enter. Add state. Private. Var. Is animating. 
equals false. Now navigate to the end of the circle and add a new animation modifier to it. Animation Animation dot interpolating spring stiffness 0 0.5 damping 0 0.5 repeat forever speed 2 delay 1 as you can see we added an interpolation spring animation to the circle with three additional modifiers such as repeat forever speed and delay those modifiers are self-explanatory in my opinion. The only thing to do now is to start this animation each time on appearing. Insert this modifier. On appear. Perform. Is animating. Equals true. It's still not animating because we didn't add the is animation property to the scale effect. Let's do that. Enter. Scale effect is animating. Question mark. Random scale. Column. 1. This specific code starts the animation on appearing. Super. It's almost done, but as you can see on the live preview, all circles are moving and scaling together at the same time. That's why we need to refine this animation with some variants. First we are going to randomize the speed then the delay. Shall we? Enter the following code. Funk. Random speed. Returns. Double. Return. Double dot random. In. Closed range. 0 0.025. To 1.0. After that, modify the speed of the animation with this code. Speed. Random speed. It's as simple as that. Next. Let's continue with the delay property. Enter. Funk. Random delay. Returns. Double. Return. Double dot random. In. Closed range from 0 to 2. This code will delay each animation from 0 up to 2 seconds. Now change the delay modifier of the animation with this code. Delay. Random delay. Now guess what? The motion effect feature is done. We just need to delete the placeholder text from the view. So let's do that. And we have finished developing this cool animation. Just one more thing. Running such a complex animation with tons of moving and scaling elements could be power consuming. But don't worry, since there is a special modifier that can cope with this delicate scenario. Drawing group. Add this new modifier to the Z stack container. New modifier, drawing group. There it goes. As you may know, Swift UI uses core animation for its rendering by default, which offers great performance out of the box. With the drawing group modifier, this complex rendering won't be slowed down because this tells Swift UI that it should render the contents of the view into sequential still images, which are significantly faster than real time rendering. Behind the scenes, this operation is powered by Metal, that is Apple's high-level framework for working directly with the GPU. And with this tiny addition, this motion effect will not suffer any performance reduction. Final touches. Alright, before we call it a day, we still need to implement this motion animation into the gallery view, shall we? Open the gallery view file and embed the placeholder text into a new scroll view. Scroll view. Vertical. Shows indicators. False. New comment end of scroll. 
After that, add this new frame modifier to it. Frame Max Width Infinity Max Height Infinity As you can see on the preview, this code will expand the scroll view both horizontally and vertically. And finally, we need to add the motion animation to this scroll view as a new background. Enter the following. Background. Motion animation view. It's done. Now, let's run a test. Testing. Build and run the Africa project. The Xcode simulator already opened and the app has launched as well. To test the motion animation, we need to select the gallery menu from the top bar. See? It works like a charm. The translucent circles are moving and scaling up and down organically with different speeds and delays. Splendid! I hope that you liked this Swift UI tutorial and learned something new as well. In the next lesson, we are going to continue our journey by developing a new gallery with a grid layout. There is a lot of things to learn about the new grid system in Swift UI, so we will jump into this topic very soon. Until then, happy coding and see you at the class.